and um, yeah if it does not jelly then you certainly want uh, uh, to start from scratch something is wrong um, and also uh, as I said before uh, if it smells um, which could have been the case if it was summer um, I mean, it, it does smell anyway, but it smells like glue. But if it smells like it's rotten, then uh, I'll start from scratch. I've uh, uh, switched the um, uh, slow cooker on again. And uh, now I just wait until it uh, uh, melts and uh, keep steering carefully with my fork. Uh, and um, uh, once it is melted, uh, uh, we start adding the chocolate bologna uh, and uh, that will take probably 10-15 minutes. The trick now is to get our um, gesso di bologna um, into that glue without introducing uh, bubbles or clumps. So I usually use a stainless steel sieve. Um, make sure that it doesn't get uh, uh, that that you doesn't ditch it in the um, uh, glue because once it's wet, uh, well, it's glue shy, right? Um, and uh, make sure that you do all of these very very carefully. So, and the trick here is, I'm just adding this um, and the uh, uh, and just shaking it slightly yeah, and go all over the place and I'm I'm not just dumping it in I'm waiting until it is actually soaked and, and is actually sinking yeah, if you can see that here um, it is it's relatively quick right now yeah, because the, uh, um, there, there's still a lot of space but it becomes more important later when, when it's more saturated um, and we're, we're not doing anything else than just uh, adding that here and make sure that we're adding it um, not only in the middle but also at the ends um, the reason is that we don't want to have a big peak in the middle and, uh, and now you see it's uh, getting uh, a little bit. You see there's a few big bubbles which actually means I put too much in there. Uh, see his, his, his big bubbles swim, swimming on top. Um, these, these big bubbles are still okay because they're easy to, um, to pop. Uh, so I go a little bit easier on it and this is boring i know um so right This is the, basically the key stage uh, because you can spoil it by uh, putting in clumps and the bubbles. There is a trick how you can actually make sure that you get at least the clumps out and, and, and some of the bubbles too. And that is pantyhose and uh, uh, pour it through the uh, 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 fabric uh, and that will remove a lot of clumps and uh, 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 bubbles but it is quite a task and if you work carefully then you don't uh, need that right
now we have this really nice goo here which is our gesso the only thing we need to do now is stir it uh, and uh, very very carefully with our fork uh, bigger fork uh, smaller fork um, slotted spoon uh, but make sure that you're not stirring it too vigorously uh, so we just distribute the uh, gesso evenly and um, you need to uh, do that every time you start uh, um, after it has cooled down it will become this uh, uh, pretty hard mass um, uh, when, when it cools down it will still be slightly elastic uh, because uh, it, it keeps the water in it and uh, that's that's pretty much it uh, remember once you start the glue especially if you add the um, uh, the, the chalk um, it starts getting off it's an organic material uh, and you have depending on, 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 on the circumstances seven to ten days to use that up um, keep it keep it in a fridge uh, if you can but don't make a glue on the weekend uh, for the next weekend um, yeah that's pretty much it and uh, so uh, thanks for listening and um, I see you later cheers